If my eyes look red today, it's because I'm dry and not high, okay? I live out in the middle of the desert. Sometimes there's no moisture in the air um, and it makes my eyeballs like dry out and turn red. I also get like super dry skin and it gets all flaky, like baklava, but not delicious. Today, I wanna tell you how I came to live in this place um, and why I love it, even when my skin doesn't. And so, where to start this? I think I'm gonna start the third time I ever came to the Sedona area because this is the trip where I realized I was in strange country. I kept visiting before I moved here because I just felt so drawn to the area, but the third time around some like weird shit happened. I was at the gym and uh, I ran into this guy who was covered from head to toe in sacred geometry. And he was doing upside down handstand push-ups on a BOSU ball. So I was like, holy shit. I was really curious and I went over to him and I was like, how do you do that? Like I walk around on my own two feet and gravity kicks my ass. Oh no, I hope I don't fall. <laughs> You're walking around on your hands like it's nothing. And I expected to get some answer about calisthenics. And instead, I got some super esoteric explanation about how he concentrates all his life force energy, his chi, his prana, in his abdomen. Um, and I really wasn't sure what to say to that, but I didn't have to say anything because he immediately launched into this like soliloquy about his relationship with Archangels Michael and Metatron. It was a, it was a little weird. <laughs> and he proceeded to tell me that I was a starseed soul who was going to uh, create a new genre of literature called new fiction. And I was like, wow, nice to meet you too. And uh, I sitting there listening to him, I realized finally that I was in a city full of people like him. And I was the odd one out because I didn't believe in this shit. People in Sedona talk about aliens and angels as nonchalantly as uh, I might talk about gravity. They're like, of course it's, it's right there. What do you mean? Of course it exists. And I think he could sense my curiosity about the woo woo things. He was like, it's like he had a woo dar. And it was like, this is a potential convert for the Galactic Alliance. So he invited me to this thing called an ascension ceremony. And I was like, what's an ascension ceremony? And he was like, you'll see. That night I show up at this woman's apartment. There's like 13, 14 people there. And they're all like 40s, 50s. One of them was in robes. Several of them pointed out the fact that I was an alien, which made me laugh. I didn't, I didn't know what a star seed or an alien, or, like I didn't know any of this stuff back then. And so I, it's like, I, I felt like, I felt like a muggle that had just stumbled into the wizarding world, um, but also like uh, like I was in a room full of adults who were playing make-believe. Like I was very confused at this point in time. In the center of this room, there was a chair draped with a sheet. And I was told that, um, I was told that an invisible atom accelerator had been placed under the chair by Archangel Michael himself. And uh, he who sat at the, upon the chair would experience an elevation in vibration. I was very conflicted standing there in that room. Part of me like wanted to laugh. I was like, this is a room full of adults like playing make-believe. Like I feel like I stumbled in on a cult. And the other part of me was like very much aware that I was under a microscope. Like I was being watched by these people to see how I would react. And they were all really lovely and friendly, but the whole experience was like, it was very bizarre. So I put on my politest, my politest social mask and I behaved my damn self. I went right along with the fun and games, okay? We all took turns sitting in the magic chair and channeling information. So people would like connect to their guides or angels or ancestors or aliens or whatever, and they would talk. And some people like did this like kind of stream of consciousness thing and it was really cool. And it was like a speech and you like wanted to clap. Other people, it was like tongues and gibberish and weird. Um, I got up there, I think I just gave thanks because again, I was like trying to go along with it and not give away the fact that um, I was a muggle who had stumbled in on the wizarding world. And at the end of the ceremony, they gave me an opportunity to ask like a million questions because I had a million questions and they were very patient and they were very kind. And I was like, you know, these people may be off their goddamn rockers. They're invisible atom accelerator rockers, uh, but they're very pleasant. One thing I asked them was what ascension was and they tried to describe it to me. And I remember asking them, oh, so it's like enlightenment. And they were like, no, it's bigger than that, which I still not sure I totally grasped, but they told me to read A Course in Miracles. So that's been sitting on my shelf gathering dust for two years. Needless to say, I kept in touch with Metatron geometry dude for a couple of years. Um, I thought we could be friends if I ever moved to Sedona and then I found out that he was crazy, like like bat 
crazy. He was like, yeah, the Galactic Alliance sent you to me for mentoring and some other stuff that was like super shady. And then I found out that he, he wasn't exactly homeless, but he like has a plot of land somewhere with a tent and a bathtub. <laughs> I'm so conflicted between like talking to strangers and never doing that again. Like, how do you make friends if you don't talk to strangers? Fr friends are always strangers before you talk to them, you know? F it. So that was my third trip to Sedona. Um, and each time I went back, it was like I got pulled in a little bit deeper. Third time was where I really went down the rabbit hole. But the first time was relatively like a normal, normal experience. I was 22 or 23 at the time and was working as part of a luxury branding company. So we would travel to hotels uh, and we would do comp set analyses where we would basically explore the city, stay in really nice hotels, eat really good food, and the client would foot the bill. It was a beautiful business model. If I do so say myself, do so, say so, do say so myself. I instantly, instantly fell in love with Sedona. Like the minute we drove into the city, you, even if you're just a little bit energy sensitive, you can feel the shift and it's gorgeous. It's got these stunning red rock buttes that look like they're from another world. And again, like you can feel the energy when you get close to the, to the city. She got that big vortex energy. At this point, I should add, um, if you've been on this channel before, you may know that I have had psychic experiences on and off throughout my life, things like precognitive dreams. And for a lot of my life, I lived in resistance to this uh, and tried to tune it out. It's actually not an uncommon thing among intuitives that you have a lot of these experiences as a child um, and you kind of shut them out because they're weird and they're not supposed to be real. And so for a lot of my life, I like had this on the back burner and was trying to ignore it. And then when I lived in Thailand and went to a silent meditation camp, I ended up having an out of body experience. Over there, these things are totally normal, but in the West, we don't believe in these things. And so I basically flipped my and I spent the next two years having all these weird undiagnosable illnesses. And I was thinking that I was either like had a psychotic break or was dying and like had a brain tumor which was causing hallucinations or something. Anything I could <laughs> to rationalize, rationalize away these um, experiences. It was weird because on one hand, I've had all these experiences that aren't supposed to be possible. On the other hand, they're not supposed to be possible and I've had them. You know what I'm saying? And the thing in Thailand made it so I could no longer deny. Um, there was nothing I could do to deny the fact that there is something else going on in the world, even if a lot of people aren't aware of it. I think a lot of people are, but for the most part, you know, people don't, at least in the West, we don't believe in these kinds of things and it's out there. And that's what kind of set me on this quest for answers. And I think that's why Sedona resonated with me so much at that time in my life is because I was desperately looking for answers and the new age mecca of the world seemed like a great place to start. I was like, well, I may be crazy, but at least I'm not Sedona crazy. Oh no, eventually I'd find out that I fit right in. Like a glove. But that first trip, there was no real woo-woo stuff. There was, there was a little bit. It was like just enough of a taste to get me hooked. We had like our auras photographed, but for the most part, um, for the most part, my takeaways were that I'm gonna get married barefoot at the La Berge de Sedona. And uh, I was inexplicably drawn to this land. So drawn to it that I actually decided to come back a week later for leisure. The third time I came back was the Ascension Ceremony. And the fourth time I came back, uh, I was planning on taking a cross country road trip while I worked on a screenplay for grad school. But it didn't really end up being cross country because I got to Sedona and just decided that I didn't want to leave. Every morning I would go to this beautiful coffee shop that no longer exists thanks COVID, um, but it was called Creekside Coffee or something. And it was sort of like on this uh, ledge thing and it overlooked a valley and had the river running through it. And then just this beautiful red rock backdrop. If I can find a picture somewhere from my archives, I shall put it here. And I would go there pretty much every morning to work on this screenplay. And uh, sometimes there was this older gentleman who would come in. I think he was uh, second gen Taiwanese and he would wave and he was friendly. And one morning he introduced himself and he came up, I think his name was Mike. Um, but he asked what my name was and I told him Kiara. And he was like, oh, with a CH. And I was like, how did you, how did you know that? No one ever gets that unless they speak Italian. And he was like, well, the CH is very psychic. K would be kinetic. And it was in that moment that I decided I was going to move to Sedona because if anywhere else in the world, someone would have said something like that to you, you would have backed away slowly. But in Sedona, this is just 
normal coffee shop conversation. And I was like, what if, what if I have been lying to myself for my entire life, running away from this, um, this, this facet of life, if you will. And in a place like Sedona, I wouldn't have to. In fact, maybe I could find some answers. Maybe I could make some sense of all this weird like synchronicity and the law of attraction and precognition and telepathy and all the rest. So a year later, through a little bit of luck and a lot of bit of hustle, I moved to the area. About 30 minutes outside of Sedona, I would not want to be in the actual city. One, it's expensive, very expensive. Two, um, it's six months out of the year, it's like jam packed with tourists. So I like being close enough that, you know, it's a skip hop and a jump away, but um, I actually live in a relatively rural area which is how I like it, um, but f nowhere. Away from the humans, but I am right where I wanna be and that is the story of why I moved to the Sedona area. Tell me in the comments, have you ever felt drawn to an area inexplicably? And if so, what did you do about it? I'd love to know in the comments and in any case, thank you for tumbling down the rabbit hole with me today. Hail to the power and the sight and until next time, I hope you stay very, very blessed, my friends.